after watching exciting play in week 10, it looks like we're right back at sloppy play in week 11 in a week where we've seen 12 extra points missed by these kickers. I don't know what's going on with these kickers, guys, but what I do know is what's going on in the NFL, specifically in the top 10. But before I get into number 10, let me tell you, I had to think long and hard about who had earned the right to be in the Say What You Like Week 12 Top 10 NFL Power Rankings. First, I thought, maybe the Houston Texans. I mean, they almost convinced me to include them in on this list, but then I remembered who was playing quarterback for that team. And then I thought, hey, Miami had a breakout fourth quarter against the Rams. And then I asked myself, well, why were they down to the inept Rams in the first place? Then I thought about how the Minnesota Vikings looked really good, ending their four-game losing streak. But in order to crack the top 10 again, they're going to have to earn it. And they can do so by beating the number 10 Detroit Lions in the earliest of the three Turkey Day contests. Now Matt Stafford continued his solid play this season in a 26-19 win over the hapless Jacksonville Jaguars. But the player of the game was tied in Eric Ebron, who proved not only does he have the hands, but he can even tote that rock in the end zone by scoring the game-winning touchdown on a rushing play. Now Jim Caldwell has to keep this team focused with first place in the NFC North on the line during their annual Turkey Day battle. Now speaking of first place, the number nine Atlanta Falcons will be facing a team that seems to be all but falling apart just in time for the home stretch. And on a little side note, what an embarrassing way for this team to play during Larry Fitzgerald's goodbye tour. But Atlanta's focus needs to be on putting this bad team away and keeping a cushion between them and the suddenly competitive Tampa Bay Buccaneers in the NFC South. Now, what wasn't very competitive was the Sunday night football matchup where the number eight Washington Redskins shredded the, no pun intended guys, Green Bay Packers. The Packers defense allowed 30 or more points for the fifth time in six games. And Kirk Cousins had another phenomenal game finishing with 375 yards and three touchdowns. Combine that with their talented wide receivers like Pierre Garçon, Deshaun Jackson, and even Jamison Crowder. It's no wonder why many in the league think this Washington offense boasts the most explosive passing game in this league. But the scary thing is this. The Skins seem to have finally found a back that can truly keep a defense honest in undrafted rookie Robert Kelly. With all this ammo, Washington looks to blow up the Cowboys' nine-game winning streak at AT AT&T Stadium this Thanksgiving. Now, switching the focus to perhaps the biggest matchup of the week will be the number seven Kansas City Chiefs traveling to Mile High to take on the Denver Broncos. And I predict this game will be a close one. As we look at these two teams, they come in with identical records of seven and three and almost identical statistics on both offense and defense. Kansas City comes in averaging 22.2 points per game, all while allowing 18.7 per game on defense. The number six Denver Broncos average 23.9 points per game and give up 18.9 per game. So just as the numbers suggest, both teams come into this matchup playing great defense, but also bear the burdens of subpar offenses. Perhaps it might be another special teams play that decides this battle of the AFC West rivals. Our number five team in this week's power rankings are now winners of five straight. That's right the New York football Giants. And during this winning streak, the Giants have started to see a return on their investment on that defensive side of the ball. As off-season free agent signings, Janoris Jenkins and Olivier Vernon have helped to turn this defense around, along with safety Landon Collins, who has five interceptions on the season. Now, if Eli can just continue to keep the turnovers to a minimum, they should have no problem improving to 8-3 and three by beating the winless Cleveland Browns this weekend. Shifting gears to another contender in the NFC with a record of 7-2-1. The number four Seattle Seahawks, who are coming off another very impressive win over the Philadelphia Eagles. Now, with Michael Bennett looking to return to that defense this week, the Seahawks look to close the gap on the Cowboys for home field advantage through the NFC playoffs. 
And for as great as the Cowboys are looking so far this season, when you take a closer look at this Seattle remaining schedule, you'll see some very winnable games against the likes of the Buccaneers, Panthers, Packers, Rams, Cardinals, and 49ers. The only question left is, will that 6-6 six and six tie against the Arizona Cardinals earlier in the year come back to bite them? Fresh off a 27-20 win for the Battle of Mexico on Monday Night Football, returning back to the number three spot is the Oakland Raiders. And for as bad as Brock Osweiler continues to look after signing that big contract, the young Derek Carr is taking over this league at quarterback. He went 21 for 31 for 295 yards, three touchdowns, and an interception. And while one might argue that this game was a little bit too close considering the competition, nobody can argue with the Raiders' 8-2 record on the season. No Gronk, no problem, as the number two New England Patriots returned back to their winning ways. Tom Brady also returned to form against his childhood favorite team by throwing for four touchdowns and no interceptions. LeGarrette Blunt also had a field day against this 49ers defense, finishing with 129 yards on 19 carries. Next up for the AFC leading Pats, they'll be hosting Ryan Fitzpatrick and the New York Jets at Gillette Stadium. Back for a second straight week at number one, the NFL leading 9-1 Dallas Cowboys. And after completing the season sweep against the AFC North by defeating the Baltimore Ravens 27-17, the Cowboys look to go for 10 straight on Thanksgiving against a very dangerous division rival, the Washington Redskins. I believe this will be the Cowboys' toughest test in weeks as the rivalry with the Redskins runs deep. But with the largest point differential in the NFL, who but only the ugliest of Cowboy haters can doubt the Cowboys are legitimate Super Bowl contenders behind a very special pair of rookies.